I mean, you gotta see it, right? Darth Vader? Totally. Hmm? What is going on, guys? Alright, so, another day of wrenching on the bus. Got my real world work done, so now it's time to play. Today I am tackling, disassembling the bay window rear torsion, get the control arms off, get the trailing arms off, get the knuckles off, get the shocks off, get the everything off, out of the way, and see what we can't do about transfer them onto here. Now, there is conflicting info about this torsion being interchangeable with those arms. They definitely don't interchange with the late arms, like my other bay window up there. But, there's no real cutoff date I can find. People say early bay, the 771 was technically an early bay. Early bay, Jesus. Technically an early bay, 71. So, maybe, they might mean 68, 69, they might mean just 68, because 68 bay front beams are different, will fit in a split because the 68 bay has a lot of split stuff in it. So, I don't know. So we're gonna take this stuff apart, we're gonna take that stuff apart, and see what's gonna take to make that stuff go onto that stuff. And then that will hold up that transmission, and then I can put the engine back in, and then I can have a driving bus, which is the goal we all have, I think. So, get started on that, and I will report my findings. All right, so I stripped off the bay arm, bay knuckle, all that stuff. And I brought them over here to my split window bus. And I am stoked with a capital S to report that it slid right on with no issue. Torsions are exactly the same. So, can confirm that at least a 71 bay window IRS arm will fit on a 1964 bus. Very happy that I don't have to screw with cutting and welding these to make some contraption and it just went straight on. So, big win there. So I'll get to tearing the rest of it apart and get ready to mount up the brackets for the trailing arms and making the mount for the transmission. Well, I'd originally planned to Use the CNC to cut out the brackets to mount these control arms onto that rear torsion tube. And I started looking, I was like, eh, well, I mean, these welds are not really just on one side. So I took a torch and I just burned out the stock bracket because it already has like all this other added stuff on it that it's probably needed. So I burned off this bracket. And I'm left with this big goober mess. So now I'm gonna start grinding away and try to get it back. I'm probably gonna end up just cutting them anyhow, but I figured it was worth a shot. So I will get some work in the grinding kind of wheel and see if I can make these usable. Welder noise. They clean up a lot better than anticipated. So I went through and measured everything about 422 times. Set my handy dandy digital protractor up there and measured off of the other torsion. Went back and forth, back and forth. It's about 14 degrees uh, twisted on the axis, axis, axis of the torsion. So this is tilted down about 14 degrees. And the bay torsion is about two inches wider then the split. So I had to measure off the control arm and hope for the best. Anyhow, tacked it up, threw the control arm up and everything fits absolutely gravy. So couldn't be more stoked about that. So now I get to do it again on this side. And there we have it. Independent rear is in place. Obviously it's just tacked up there, everything needs to get cleaned up real well and then finish welded, but I wanted to get the wheels and tires on. 
make sure everything was copacetic, everything cleared right, everything moved through the suspension travel right before I burned everything in solid. But super happy how it came out. Still sits the exact same height that it did prior. Uh, with the swing axle, which makes total sense. But however, all of the camber is gonzo no more. Uh, that's the other reason I didn't tack those in yet because of camber. Those brackets could be moved out a little bit, I think. I assume. Yeah, they would. And it would take some of the camber out and push the wheel out a little bit, but I think it's fine. It's not a big deal. Currently, I have split bus drums on it, which are completely incorrect. Like, the snout is way too long. You can only get about two threads of engagement on the nut. And also, they're sitting back in too much. Um, I have, like, two and a half inches of room in the wheel well, and they're actually just rubbing the spring plate. So, I think I'm going to try a set of thing drums on it, because they are wider, and they should have a shorter snout. And that should do it. If not, then I'm going to have to break down and buy, I guess, early bay five lug drums. I need to find some place that has all the measurements and determine which ones are right to go on here. But super stoked with how it turned out. Everything looks really awesome. Uh, the only concern I still have are with the axles because the bay... Rear torsion is 46 inches, and this torsion is 44 inches. So I lost two inches, but that's only half inch per CV. There should be more than that amount of play in the CV joints, I would assume. So play over here, worst case, a thing CV might work. I haven't measured a thing to see how wide, or not a thing CV, but a thing axle, or even use a beetle axle with these joints or whatever. So that's fine. Cross the bridge and come to it. Not real worried about it. So, also, first box from Jugs showed up today. And, braking system upgrade. So, dual circuit master cylinder. Dig in here a little further. Slave cylinder for the clutch. So, no more cable back there. And a master cylinder for the clutch. Uh, waiting on pedals. They're supposed to be here, I think, Friday. And then I can start fabricating up everything in the cab that's going to hold those pedals and make it all work. So, pretty excited to get that done. Super excited to have the independent rear done. All that's left to do. Back here, like I said, just weld everything up solid. And then, where'd the transmission go? Build a mount that'll take these two bolts that are vertical and turn them into basically those two studs, which are horizontal, which seems super easy and shouldn't be an issue at all to come up with a mount that'll fit everything in there. So, really have the progress that's uh, going on. All right. Rear transmission mount is in. Transmission's hanging up here on its own. Super overkill. Just the way we like it. Now it's time to build an engine mount. Alright, real quick, just for fun, I wanted to compare the brake system, or the, the brake master cylinders, I guess. So this, obviously, is the original bus master cylinder. Single circuit, so if you lose a brake line or anything happens, you lose fluid, you're done, you have no brakes. This setup, tandem circuit, so you have two pistons in here, so if you were to lose one brake line, you would still have the other circuit completely independent, which is great. Also, holds more fluid, obviously, which probably a good thing, and the bore is substantially larger. This is a one inch bore. I'm not sure what these are. I think uh, 20, 22, 19. There's different sizes of these. I can't remember which ones. There's an oversized one for buggies. I think it's 22. And I think stock bus is like 19 millimeter. So 
Not always the greatest thing to have a bigger bore because you affect your braking pressure, but since I'll have a little bit different pedal ratio, it's not really a concern. Uh, I did about three hours worth of math to figure everything out. Pedal ratio versus the size of my wheel cylinders versus this master cylinder. And it looks like everything ties together good. But the good thing about this master cylinder is if for whatever reason it doesn't work, it's pretty universal and there are dozens of options, different sizes, different strokes, different everything you can get in to bolt up to this flange on those pedals I have. So that's the reason I went this way because upgrades are easy and going to a different ratio or different whatever is easy and obviously much safer setup. So there's that. All right, so we went away camping for the weekend and came back. And I spent today knocking out getting the transmission engine mounted. Actually had a video showing the transmission mount pretty good, but I lost all that because I'm too inept to use a camera. So look up under there. Just bent up a mount that welds up to the torsion. And then on the back of the transmission, there is a just like universal leaf spring bushing on there. Uh, actually, he welded onto the factory bay window transmission mount. Just flipped 180 degrees to make it all work. So that's knocked out and holds back the transmission. And then I came up here and mounted up the first engine mount on the side. I think it's going to work out really well. This is, well, here I'll show you. First thing I was originally going to do was use the stock bay window, early bay mustache bar mounts. So they would mount on a bracket like right here, and then there's a bar that goes across the back of the engine that supports the engine in a early bay. And so I was originally going to use these just because off-the-shelf availability, it still is Volkswagen stuff, kind of made it a little easier, I thought, but there was no really good way to build a bracket using these. No simple way, I should say. They kept them in the correct orientation. Like I could mount them sideways like this, but then it's taking the stress on these sides and it's just not how they're designed to work. So, pitched Darth Vader's helmet and went with these. So this is a two inch piece of Dom tubing, a quarter inch wall. And these are energy suspension, just a generic bushing they make. Uh, that fits inside of it. It's also tapped for a greaser and Then there is a sleeve that goes in here that takes us to half inch diameter bolt, which is what's there, right? So super cool. They come in all different sizes um, Four wheel parts sells them, but good luck getting them because apparently four wheel parts just ships things whenever they want to now I've been waiting on a set of springs from them for three weeks now Anyhow, bought these off of Tin Man Customs uh, on eBay. Super reasonable price. I think they were like 15 bucks, and they were here in two days. So, good job to Tin Man Customs. Shout out to them. And actually, while we're talking about the Darth Vader helmets, I ordered these and some other various stuff from CIP. Uh, and it came actually on a Sunday. I ordered it Friday morning and it came Sunday <laughs> at around noon. DHL showed up and delivered it. So, anyhow. So we have these things. They just weld on. Good universal bushing to do whatever with. So, also this isn't done yet. This is just tacked up. I mean, this arm is obviously finished welded, but these will be plated on top all the way back. And then I'm going to actually plate this tube back into the frame rail. And probably actually plate the outside of the frame rail too to stiffen everything up and then box it back up to the body here just to tie everything together and because I mean this is not that strong it's eighth inch thick I mean whatever the metric equivalent eighth inch thickness is steel and it's not just in, it's just in single shear so there's not a ton of strength there laterally for this to flex against so once it's all gusted up, I think it'll be fine. Um, reason I did decide to go this way, I originally had been up a cross member to go underneath everything, but I sacrificed a lot of ground clearance that way. I would cost three or four inches of ground clearance underneath the engine. 
and also it takes away my ability to use the easiest way I have found to put this engine in and out. I wouldn't be able to do that with a cross member underneath and I mean maybe it could come from the top with a cherry picker but it just would make things entirely too complex for what they need to be. So that's done. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up this top this other mount maybe tonight see what happens get that all welded up and then it will be fully mounted and I can get on with my life speaking of on with my life this is what's going to be operating the transmission decided instead of cable operated yes this bench is a mess instead of cable operated I went with a hydraulic actuated slave cylinder and there's a hydraulic master cylinder around here someplace to run it. So, gets rid of all the cables. Love it or hate it. I mean, I think this is a better option than running the cable back, especially because position of the transmission changed. So, clutch cable sizing might be a bit of a conundrum. I don't know if they're going to be different lengths or what. So, basically explains all that. That's what's happening. Once everything is welded up and solid, everything will come back out again. I have undercoated. I'm going to spray up underneath the bottom side, seal it all up. Then I'm going to clean all of this up, spotless, treat the rust, and paint everything probably bright white just so that there's plenty of light back here and I can see if there's any leaks or anything going on. And that will button up everything at the back and then we can move on to finishing tidying up the wiring and starting on brakes and front suspension and that will be primo awesome so all right guys another little story about what's going on with the bus just knocking things out slowly i mean it has taken a little bit longer than i had hoped but i mean you an elephant one bus or one bite at a time and you finish a bus uh, one wild at a time i guess so i really appreciate everybody watching Appreciate everybody that likes, that subscribes, everybody that's on Instagram, at Zero Balance Builds on Instagram. It's, that's really growing quickly, and that's awesome. So, thanks everybody, and leave a comment with any questions. I've had a lot of great questions recently, and that's awesome. I love talking to people about how my mindset works, and maybe people can change my mind about what I think is going to work when somebody can say, hey, you're an idiot, don't do that. So... Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Like, subscribe, do all that stuff. Watch my other videos. Follow us on Instagram. Do the thing. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.